Let's talk about this real quick before we go into Twitter. Before we go into Twitter spaces, uh, just because you know, when coming from someone that has had some of the worst takes of all time on Twitter, okay, and I'll, I'll, you know, the ball golf terrible take. Now I go back with it. I don't really care. I'll be the first one to come back, come out and say a take was bad. So when I see a bad take coming from someone that is the king of bad takes. It's very easy for me to see this. So this popped up on my Twitter timeline. And um, yeah, I feel like we just need to talk about this real quick. So this is from Ella, uh, who is an FPO player. Uh, recently from Ultimate Frisbee, transferred over. Really good Ultimate Frisbee player and has picked up disc golf uh, really fast. And is you know probably going to be competing in the top 10 for quite some time. It looks like. So she said this weekend was a lot of fun, but it did remind me of how much I dislike being in the gallery exclusively because inebriated AMs love yelling their very uneducated opinions about what the pros are choosing to do. She continued on by saying, no, that backhand dominant player should not be throwing a forehand up shot just because you would do it. There's a reason they're on pro- on the pro tour and not you. Mm. Um, so. Uh, we should... You should mention, though, this tweet has since been deleted. So she probably (laughs) has realized this was a bad take. So she did say, so she did delete it, but she came out and said, because I wanted to check to see if, like, you know, there was a statement or something about that. Because, you know, I'm always interested, like, how how people handle their social media. Like, do you just delete it and act like it never happened or what? So she she came out and said, just to clarify a couple things, I love and appreciate having fans. Yes, there was drinking at the course this weekend. People are more than welcome to spectate, heckle, yell, etc. I'm allowed to find things annoying. Thanks, everyone, and have a great rest of your day. Uh, she then p- continued to say, also, also, ultimate heckling is greater than disc golf heckling, which I will disagree heavily. I think ultimate heckling is terrible. As, as far as like, because their whole thing of heckling is like it should be funny or whatever, whatever. I mean, heckling's heckling, whatever. Uh, I have lots to unpack here. Lots to unpack. Uh, the first thing that just jumped out of my mind was we, and by me, we, I'm saying people that are trying to make a living playing disc golf, do not do that. Aren't able to achieve that goal of paying the bills and playing disc golf if it weren't for the fans. Simple as that. If people aren't paying attention to what you're doing as a business, as a sporting entertainment business, you don't make money. So in that post, there just seemed like there was this lot of like elite, is it elitism? Is that the word? Elitist? Yeah. Of like, I'm up here and you guys are down here. So don't, don't even talk to me. I'm above you. We're on the pro tour. You keep your amateur blah, blah, blah to yourself. I'm not a huge fan of that, obviously, for lots of different reasons. Mainly one right now is the last thing I think we should be doing is trying to prevent fans to consume disc golf. I think we want more people to consume disc golf versus less people to consume disc golf. And this is also something, too, of where I, I, I saw a lot, unfortunately, firsthand in Ultimate, where it's like, again, these are, these are certain statements that come from people that might be preaching that this sport is super welcoming. We welcome everyone. You, everyone's welcome. Disc golf is, has the best people in the world because we welcome everyone. And as soon as someone does something that doesn't sit right with you, well, you're not welcome, but everyone else is. Now, let me first say, I will not condone. What the heck was that? What the heck was that? I don't know. I will not condone or stand for fans being disrespectful or yelling out hate or anything like that that would essentially at any other sporting event would get someone removed, Mm -hmm. right? If someone's about to try to throw and as they're in the run up, you scream something at them. Um, 
I mean, honestly, like it's, it's wild though, because again, it's funny. I went through the mentions a little bit on this and it's so funny. Cause I'm like, I'm trying to remember Twitter profiles to be like, was this the same person telling me a while ago to stop trying to make disc golf like golf? But yet here they are saying like, Hey, we need to have respect. We need to like have this, like the, again, this whole like golf, like we don't say anything bad. Cause if you go to Anyone out there watching, if you go to an NFL game, an NHL game, an NBA game, anything like that, you will hear some of the craziest stuff yelled from the fans to the players. Crazy stuff. You don't really hear that kind of stuff that much in the golf atmosphere. So it's kind of weird, again, where it's like I do feel like some people want to pick and choose certain things from golf but don't act like they're getting it from golf because golf does like if you go to a golf event, it is a different atmosphere, a different environment. We talked about this again, I think on two, two um, debate nights ago with the loudest hole where waste management has this kind of like culture of where we can do a little bit different things than others. It's weird though, to see some people be like, Hey, we need to have this, which is like, again, what other people the same people maybe have even said like, I, I, we don't want the stuffy disc uh, golf to come over to disc golf. We want it to be, you know, if we are talking about how like at the world shot where people are running around in the course and we're like, yeah, we don't really want that. But then these people are saying they do want that, but that they don't want that. It's gets very confusing on what you're actually trying to prioritize and value. So I'll be the first to say like, I don't think people should be yelling out hateful stuff, but if someone's like yelling out, like throw a thumber, like I hear all the time, throw a scuba. We want to see a scuba when in fact it's not even close to a scuba shot. Or and her example was literally just going off her example. Her example sounded like someone was saying like, you should throw a, th- a forehand. So I don't know if it's like, if they were yelling like, Hey, you suck. If you were good, you should throw a forehand. I doubt that's what I've never heard anyone say anything close to that. So that's where like, I just have this like weird thing of like, again, when I read that, I just got this, like, there's a reason they're on the pro tour and you're not. And it's like, man, at the end of the day, and it is, I'll say again, I have no fear of saying what's on my mind. Right. (laughs) Because it's so much harder for me to hold back and try not to say stuff that I, I believe than it is just for me to just come out and say everything. It's tough to watch a lot of these people take money from fans. Let me try to think real quick how to say this. <laughs> hold on. Her first tweet goes out. Uh-huh. She starts seeing negative things and we, and again, I'm not just pinpointing it on her. I've seen this from a lot of other people as well happen on social media where something is said, they post something and they start seeing negative feedback. And instead of just being like, no, I'm standing by what I said. Like I believe in what I said, they remove it. And then they come out with this like PR move of basically like, no, 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 everything's cool. The thing I don't like about that is I would much rather just someone to just be authentic and be like, you know what? I'm going to say some things that are going to upset some people and that's fine. But at least I'm being true to myself and I am saying whatever, but I I can't, I, I just have a hard time seeing people that when it comes to like fans and money and it's like, oh crap, like I I can't piss off these people. These are people that make me money. So like, I'm going to go out and like fix it by saying something, but I actually don't really mean it because what I actually meant was the first thing I said, and then I deleted it. And now that is where it's difficult for me Mm -hmm. because I, and it's weird. Do you, do you think it's better to just not say anything at all? And, at, and, and basically have these fans or whatever that pay f- your discs and buy your stuff and all that stuff. Because at the end of the day, like that's the thing. If no one likes you, right? If no one likes you, no one's going to buy your tour, tour Series disc. No one's going to uh, give a, a flying cahoot what disc you're throwing. You're not going to get sponsors because it doesn't matter what's in your bag. No one cares. Guess what? You, if you go out and win every single tour event, you're not making that much money. Because... 
we just saw $6,000 is how much Drew Gibson won. If he has no one covering his bills, right? If he, uh, Grant, if he lives in a van, I guess some of the expenses are different. But Drew Gibson, I don't think, was living in a van. So my guess is he was paying for hotel. He was paying for food. He was paying for all this stuff. If he doesn't have any sponsors paying for that stuff, it probably costs him close to $1,000 to be out there for the week or somewhere around there, right? $500, $700. So he's bringing home like $5,000 after taxes, all this stuff. The money isn't there just to go out and be good. So you need to have the fans to like you Mm -hmm. for you to sell this and then for companies to be like, oh, this person's really well liked. So the question is, do you think it's... Who do, you, who, who do you respect more? The person that doesn't say anything and have fans just be like, oh, this person's awesome, I love them, and they just aren't saying anything so no one really knows who they are? Or someone that is like basically going out and saying stuff to try to get people to like them to then buy their stuff? Well, I mean, I think the – well, first off – Sorry, I said a whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> But I just, I, I, just don't, off, I, I don't like seeing almost, people get taken advantage of. I it's just almost don't like never doing the it. wrong move to just say what you think and be yourself. There are some people, and we've seen this at times, that are going to say what they think and be themselves, and no one's going to like them. So it's a, a, I mean, that's just a loss. Like if, if you if you just kind of say stuff or whatever, and you suck as a person. I mean that that sucks to be you, but it is what it is. But it, it is true of like. It's better for your fans to be fans of who you actually are because you're also going to have more diehard fans that way versus like this fake facade of like who you think your fans want you to be Yeah. and you put that out there. But when it comes to Twitter, which is where this all went down, Twitter is a unique platform that I have obviously, I mean, I've had my fair share of weird struggles on Twitter because it's really easy <laughs> to go in and like she probably heard something at this mm-hmm. tournament or something that made her be like, man, I really wish people just wouldn't do this. And in a moment of like, this sucks, I don't like this, you write a tweet. It was also two days after. It is true. Two days after gives you time to think through. So what I'm about to say doesn't make sense. It wasn't like it just happened and she just blasted it But regardless, sometimes like the way way you send a tweet. The way you say, I've been, I'll put my hand up right away. You just think people hear it the way you're thinking. I have said so many things on Twitter where I'm like, oh, this is fine, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden you get blasted with people being like, what the heck? And you're like, whoa, they took that a completely different way. Yeah. So Point example, I... me spending a thousand dollars on the driving range. There are still to this day, people thinking I was flexing that I, I have money to spend a thousand dollars. There's also people to this day that think I spent the thousand dollars just for me to, to warm up on the driving range. So I, I will be the first one to say like, there has been many a tweets that I've tweeted out that, I thought came off as one way and didn't. That's where I think Twitter is like this thing where, cause it removes your tone. It removes everything about you talking to where yep. when you send a tweet it's literally up to me to read it in what I assume your voice is writing that. So I read a tweet and one, and I'm like, Oh, this person's kind of joking around. There's a funny tweet. Yep. You read it and you're like, Holy cow, this person's a jerk. And we read yep. the same tweet. Very uh, true. Now. So what she, cause the other thing too is like, in her replies, I didn't get to see the tweet because by the time the screenshot was out, it was deleted. But for her to delete the tweet, it makes me think that one of two things, either A, you're right, she got the pushback and she was like, oh crap, I can't have pushback and you delete it. Or B, the tweet was coming across completely differently than she meant for it. And she was like, crap, this tweet didn't go over. Like I was trying to do whatever. But do you wait several hours to then tweet again to clarify if that's really the case? Or... I mean, everyone's, if you read, I don't know. everyone's different. If you read, if you read the, again, I didn't get to read any replies. So I'm just, read, I'm just going off of my personal experience in yeah. the past of where I've tweeted something and then it immediately gets taken a different way than I was trying to say it. I'm like, Oh crap. Oh crap. What do I do? What do I do? And it's like this thing of like a spiral where people are just constantly coming at you because they think I, they, they heard it the way you meant it. When really I was saying something sarcastic or I was saying whatever. Yeah. And my tone came across different on a tweet. And so now I look like a jerk or like something that I'm not or not trying to be. I think my typical response in, in, in those situations has been quote tweet it and explain myself or just like double down on the sarcasm because like the people who get it find it really funny and the people yeah. who don't, I can just kind of joke with until they understand I'm joking or they just hate me and they're never going to like me. So I don't, I'm not a huge fan of deleting tweets unless it was, I said something that I was like, 
ooh, I don't, I don't actually mean that, or I've thought through it, and I'm like, that was actually a really bad tweet. But I haven't really had any of those yet. I'm sure they'll come at someday. I feel but like I would... Twitter's just a weird platform. Yeah, I, I think I would like I would have taken it differently had the whole situation not transpired the way, like as far as deleting the tweet, then posting something s- several hours later, clarifying it. Uh, if you look at some of her responses to other people as well, like you can kind of see just like... I mean, the point she was making is completely... The initial That's what point I'm saying. If, a fair if point. she took out, if she took out the stuff of where she was like, "There's a reason why while we're on the pros and you're an ant." Like, well, she also said something about it being a a, a bad take or like, or something about like, uh, I, I'd have to read the tweet again, but something where it almost felt like she was implying the fans had no idea what they were talking about disc golf wise. Yeah, where like we we know what we're doing. You have no clue. Yeah. When in fact, like there's a lot of people that they might not be. I mean, look at some of the best coaches in the world. They don't necessarily are incredibly good at what they're coaching. Yeah. They just know really the, a good way of like getting across. Sure. So it's like, the there's a lot point, of fans that know what they're talking yeah, about. Yeah. The core point in it though, I could see where as a pro, it could be annoying if like she, maybe she's the one who's it's, like trying to a, line up a backhand throw. It's a part throw. of the situation though. Absolutely, like, but just... I could see where it could be annoying. Sure. And the other thing too is there's a, this is a year where there's going to be more fans that's and there's going to be more things point. to where even on social media yes. we saw it with uh, other yeah with other players too yeah. where like there's, there's more noise, there's more eyeballs. So Kona has more fans, but Kona has more haters than ever because the more fans you get, the more haters you yep. get. And so there's more negative comments. There's more stuff where disc golfers five years ago, you didn't have to deal with that crap. So if you've been on tour for six years, this might be one of the first years that you're in the spotlight with twice as many eyes you've ever had on you before and twice as many haters and twice as many people who are like opposing you, it feels like, to where even though you have twice as many fans, all you see is this negative stuff and you're not used to when you're on the course and you're lining up your backhand and someone's behind you like, hey, throw a forehand. They might have also been saying it as like a, a joking manner to James Conrad because they want to see James Conrad throw a forehand. Sure. Whatever. I could see where as a player, if it was said towards me, I might be like, "Ah, really? Like, let me line up my shot. Here's where I want to clarify something because she had a reply in her tweet. It says, to clarify, these things weren't yelled at me specifically. Just something I noticed while spectating MPO. Yeah, she was in the gallery. But regardless, I could see where I could, her, her core point, I could see where you might get irritated by it, I guess I should say. I getting irritated to the point of a tweet is one thing. And then I, I agree. Some of the language used in the tweet does mm-hmm. make it seem like this idea of like, we're up here where the, these tour level players, you don't belong talking to us type of thing. I, I have a hard time believing that's what she meant in those words. And that's where I'm saying Twitter's just well, a weird it's, space. It's, it's, a, it's a, it's an easy, that's always the easy thing is like when someone says something terrible to you, right? You're just like, Oh, well I could beat you. Right. Like yeah. that's, that's just an easy thing of like, well, you're an eight fifty. I mean, you see that all the time where it's like even fans will argue with other fans when someone says something negative about a player, they'll be like, Oh, well, you're eight fifty. That was rated. people's immediate response. That's what at one point my Twitter bio was <laughs> my rating's not high enough for my opinion to matter. To matter, exactly. Because we would say something <laughs> on Grip Locked and people would immediately be like, Like I said something about I fit, for some reason I feel like it was James Conrad, but even if it wasn't, I'm gonna throw him in there. I said something about a player, we'll call him James Conrad. Says something about James Conrad in 50% of the comments that disagree with me, instead of saying, this is actually the counterpoint, they're like, "What? who are you? James yeah, Conrad just, could beat you. And I was like, they, uh, when did I ever say that I could beat James Conrad? Isn't Literally that, never. Like, isn't, that's not what I, I'm not a player. That's uh, Isn't that like a, like a, like a, like if you went to like a debate, like actual debate contest, like that's something that, they don't. Well, use. yeah, because you're well, just not, personally, it's basically like, it's by just, just like a personal attack. Well, because yeah, if not, I not, not actually debating what they said, yeah, because the if I if I'm yeah. debating Silas and I'm like, we have a Fuji film here, and I'm like, hey, Silas, like Fuji films suck compared to Sony's, and Silas just immediately responds with like, well, you're ugly. Yeah. Then it just yeah. to me, I immediately go, okay, but my point was right then because you have nothing to counteract other than attacking me personally, or like right. attacking your education in that sense of being like, well, you didn't go to film school. Yeah. Oh, you, oh, oh, and, you think that Fuji yeah, Films so. sucks? Well, psh, I'm, I'll, getting, I'm getting my bachelor's in it. I'm just like, this is okay. A, well, explain to me why then. <laughs> this is another thing that I I brought up the two things right. I brought up the money and how that is going to play. It's going to be an interesting storyline moving forward of like these big contracts coming out, players getting money. Like Ricky doesn't get a top five in the first five events. What happens? Like in the past, people I'm sure would talk about it, 
but they're not going to talk about nearly as much as they are going to now, knowing that he's getting paid a million dollars every year, right? Yeah. Um, so that was a story that I think is going to continue to uh, continue on. And then the other thing too, is just like what you were saying, there are more eyeballs, there are more media, there are more people talking about disc golf, which again, at the end of the day is great for everyone. But if you're not used to negative stuff, when negative stuff comes your way, it, it just seems like that's all that's happening. Yeah. So we went through spells where with like with foundation, negative comments and stuff have built up or negative Reddit threads. And you're and not ready. Tweet. You're not used to it. So no. you just think everyone hates I you. I just, yeah, there are like moments where I'd be reading it and I'm just like, I can't get off my phone. And my wife's like, what's going on? I was like, everyone hates foundation. Yeah. She's like, no, they don't. I'm like, yes. They, like, look at these comments. She's like, you literally just scrolled past four people telling you guys, oh, what a funny video. Mm -hmm. And you're looking at the three who yeah, said you, you guys just, suck. You just pull out the But it's negative. because I was stepping into a world of social media that like I've never really been in. Yep. And so once I start getting negative comments, it, it almost feels like a friend walks in and it's just like, hey, dude, you suck. And yeah. you're just like, what the heck? When really it's just some random guy sitting behind a keyboard that who knows why they typed it. They might have a bad day at work. Yeah. And so now they're taking it out on you. You don't know. So to, to wrap this up and we'll, we'll bounce over here. Put a bow on it. We'll bounce over to Twitter spaces here in a second to, to get some of your guys' thoughts on some of the things we talked about, Las Vegas, whatever it may be. I just think there's a lot of things that we can be critical about and go after. One thing I think just as, as pros go, one thing that we just, I just, I don't like, to feel, I don't like people feeling like they're not welcome to come and watch and spectate and be a fan and be a spectator and whatever. Like, I are we really policing what people are are and aren't allowed to say at a disc golf course? Because like my, <laughs> I just know for a fact, year one, if I came out and said something like that, like as far as like, hey, these these things shouldn't be said at a disc golf tournament. Like they're not set up at, at golf tournaments. They shouldn't be set at disc golf tournaments. So many people would go after me and be like, this isn't golf. This is disc golf. Get a thicker, thicker skin, blah, blah, blah. So that's where it's like, I, there's certain things that like, I think shouldn't like, sh who cares? <laughs> like who cares? 